In this video, we're going to try to understand voltaics, cells, and batteries. So cells form batteries. So if you think about your TI-84 or whatever, you're going to have your batteries are going to be like this arrangement in the back of your uh, calculator. And what happens is the positive and negative ends are connected, and this is in series. And so what you end up getting is a battery of cells. Voltaic cells create potential difference, um, and that is known as voltage. So you're going to get a spontaneous reaction where you have your strongest oxidizing agent is above your strongest reducing agent. This is a spontaneous reaction, and it's going to give you positive voltage. So that's for any... Um, any voltaic cell. A voltaic cell is going to be composed of several different components. So you're going to have two electrodes. So you're going to have an electrode here, you're going to have an electrode here, and the electrodes are going to be solid and they conduct electricity. So those could include metal solids or they could be a carbon solid but it needs to conduct electricity for it to be an electrode. You also need to have an electrolyte solution. So electrolyte solutions have aqueous ionic compounds so that it's got aqueous cations and anions. And so in this particular arrangement, what we've got is two electrodes. We have an electrolyte there. We're also gonna have an electrolyte in here and this is going to be a half reaction that occurs in here, and there's going to be a half reaction that happens in this container. And so the container that we've got here is a porous clay cup. And the porous clay cup allows ions to travel through it. So if I have aqueous ions can go this way or this way, and it's because the clay, when it's wet, has little tiny little holes or fissures that allow the ions to travel through it. But it still holds this electrolyte solution, keep these electrolyte solutions separate. Now the other thing that we've got in this, other than the two electrodes, the electrolytes, as well as the porous boundary for the ions, is an external circuit. And the external circuit is basically where the business happens, right? So that in here, your external circuit would have been powering your, your calculator. Well, this external circuit has electrons that are going to go from one half reaction to the other. Now, all of the, every cell that we're going to, electrochemical cell that we look at is going to have this arrangement, GER, OA, so the gain of electrons reduction, the oxidizing agent, happens at the cathode. And then the loss of electrons, the reducing agent, happens at the anode. And so if I know what my two spontaneous reactions are, I'm going to be able to tell, is this the, what, or what kind of a cell is, half reaction is this and this, right? So I'm going to have two different reactions, one that happens with this solute, electrolyte and this electrode, this electrolyte and this electrode. So what I'm going to need to do is pick the strongest oxidizing agent, the strongest reducing agent, and be able to organize it. So we'll take a look at this cell. This is a cell that we actually studied in a video. So there's a video where I have a cell and I um, try to show you the components so it makes a little bit more sense. And in the video, I had two beakers. And so um, instead of having a clay cup, I had um, a saltwater bridge. And this is pretty common to see. So what we'd have is we have a beaker, another beaker. I'm going to have two electrodes and a solution in each of the beakers. And they're connected by something called a U-tube or a saltwater bridge. Saltwater bridge has some cotton ball at the end to keep the solution. And so this in the video is sodium nitrate solution. 
I have zinc solid, I have copper solid, and then in here I've got copper to sulfate solution. And in here I have, I think it's zinc sulfate solution. Might be zinc nitrate, I don't remember exactly right now. I have my external circuit that goes here, and I'm going to have my entities. So I'm going to have zincs, zinc ions, sulfate ions, and I have sodium ions, nitrate ions, and I have water, and I have copper two, and I have copper solid. And so I'm going to check my data booklet, and I'm going to see that this is an oxidizing agent, that this, oh, I also have zinc solid. The zinc solid is my reducing agent. Sodium is a terrible oxidizing agent. Sulfate and water are a terrible oxidizing agent. Water is an oxidizing agent, reducing agent. Copper two is an oxidizing agent, and copper is a reducing agent. So I'll just duck over to my data booklet and try to locate those things for you. So I've got my water up here, copper two, copper solid, I have zinc ions, zinc solid, sulfate and water, water, and then I've got like my sodiums are down here. So my strongest oxidizing agent is copper two. So this reaction is going to go this way. My strongest reducing agent is zinc. So this reaction goes this way. So my two half reactions are going to be zinc solid becomes zinc ion plus two electrons. This is Leo RAA, that's my anode. Then I have Cu2 positive plus two electrons become copper solid, and that's Ger OAC. And so when I'm looking at my video, because the copper is where it's gaining electrons, this is my cathode, this is my anode, my anode is a negative in a voltaic cell and positive in the cathode. The electrons are gained at the cathode, so the electrons are traveling from the anode where they're being lost to the cathode where they're being gained. And so because of my reactions, I can see that the zinc is going to decrease in mass, zinc solid, and copper two is going to decrease in concentration because I'm using those things up. The zinc ions will increase in concentration and copper solid will get heavier. So this copper electrode is going to increase in mass. And the, the other thing that we're going to see is we're going to have in the saltwater bridge, we have the cations will go to the cathode and anions go to the anode. And so the cation is Na positive and the anion is NO3 negative. And so anions are negatively charged, will go to the anode. So that's kind of how we evaluate that. So you can see in this diagram, we've got the porous clay cup here. The anions are going to the anode. The anode was the negative, and it's because of this half reaction. The cations go to the cathode. The cathode is here, and it's Ger OAC. The electrons are being gained over here, so the electrons go to the cathode. And um, we, we've got sort of a similar evaluation as up above. Now we've got some cell notation here. And cell notation is going to be listed as anode and then electrolyte, salt water bridge or porous boundary, electrolyte, and then my cathode. And so my anode is zinc. The solution it's in is zinc ion. We have the saltwater bridge, copper two solution, and then my cathode is the copper solid. And so um, cell notation looks like that. And I skip ahead a little bit and just go over some calculations. For every cell, your calculation is going to be the cell voltage equals the cathode minus the anode. And so I can look on the data booklet and my E cell in this case is going to be the voltage from the half reaction of zinc or of copper minus 
the zinc. So if I look back in my data booklet, I can see that it's going to be this is my cathode. So my E cell is going to be equal to E cath minus E anode. And so the whole cell's voltage is going to be positive 0 0.34 volts minus, and zinc is minus 7 .6, or, or 0 0.76. So minus negative. 0 0.76 volts and so this gives me positive 1.10 volts that's the cell potential for copper and zinc